today on Robin's Behaving Badly. Nero! Greetings, fellow barbarians. This is Magister Silla, and today on Romans Behaving Badly, we're learning about the Emperor Nero, top of the list of Rome's bad boys. I mean, we're talking about a dude so bad that he suffered the curse of Damnatium Amorii. Ooh, 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 Magister Silla. Yes, Jimmy. The name is Paige, sir. Of course it is. What's your question? What does, uh, Damnatio Memoria mean? It's Damnatio Memoriae, damnation of the memory. It means having your memory publicly erased. You know, like when your girlfriend unfriends you on Facebook and erases you from her cell phone and gets her friends to do the same thing just because you wanted to stay in and watch the game and she wanted to go see some stupid romance with Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling! Uh, La La Land, sir? That's the one, Jimmy. It's Paige, sir. Roll the clap! So you probably already have a picture of Nero in your head. We all do. Yep, that's the one. You can take a shower later. First, let's set the record straight. We've all heard that the Emperor Nero was a sex-crazed emperor with mommy issues, who, when Rome was burning, stood above the hill playing the fiddle. Well, he may have had mommy issues. Tassus writes that his mother, Agrippina, was extremely controlling. Of course, as Empress, you sort of had to be. But herein lies the problem. Tacitus is writing after Nero, and is part of the elite class in Rome. Nero was trying to shake up the elite. He made them perform in dramas and gladiator contests. Something no self-respecting Roman would do. Did Nero fiddle while Rome burned? Fun fact number one! Despite the stories, Nero never actually fiddled during the Great Fire of 64 AD. This is a modern misconception, and totally inaccurate. First of all, he was out of town, about 35 miles away in the city of Antium. Also, the fiddle had not even been invented yet! If anything, he would have played the lyre. While it is true he thought the aesthetics of the city could be improved, it has never been shown that he set any fire. The story has come from the aftermath, when Nero built his posh new palace, the Domus Aria, on top of the ruins of Rome, and blamed the Christians for the fire. Did Nero acquire his land in a massive land grab after the Great Fire? Fun fact number two! This is also incorrect! As a matter of fact, Nero opened up his own property and the imperial gardens to house Romans who had been displaced by the fire. He also enacted new laws requiring better building codes to avoid future fires. These included using less wood and more brick. Was Nero Rome's worst emperor? Fun fact number three. No! There were plenty of worse emperors, including Caligula who actually made his horse a senator, and Domitian, who had mirrors placed throughout the palace so that he could watch people making sure he wasn't going to be assassinated. Nero was actually popular among the people, reigning almost 13 years. And if there's one thing we know about the Romans, they do not suffer stupidity or incompetence. So Nero must have had some leader-like qualities. His bad boy reputation stems largely from his desire to perform. Or maybe because he was a party animal. Tacitus tells us he made the elite perform on stage. Roman actors were seen as infame, that is, unworthy. And so making the elite perform in these roles, Nero lowered their social status and brought them shame. In this way, Nero may have been seen as a great social reformer. Was Nero a mama's boy? Fun fact number four. It's true. He and his mother, Agrippina, were close. As a matter of fact, coinage from early in Nero's reign show both he and the empress face to face. Now, he wasn't exactly a mama's boy. While he lived under the guidance of Agrippina, one of Rome's most powerful empresses, he actually plotted to have her killed because she kept interfering in matters of state and showing up to parties reminding him to wash his toga. 
but she wouldn't die. Suetonius claims that he had a former slave arrange an accident to have her boat sink on an outing. But the tough old Matrona managed to swim ashore and finally had to be stabbed to death. During this altercation, she pointed to her belly, telling the men to strike her right where she carried Nero. Wow, talk about dysfunctional families. The Julio-Claudians made the Sopranos look like brownie scouts. Whatever happened to Nero? Fun fact number five! After the fire, costs were so great to rebuild Rome and the emperor's lush new digs that taxes on the provinces were increased, sowing the seeds of revolt. In 68 AD, Gaius Julius Vindex, Governor Gaul, rebelled against the new tax policies, eventually leading others such as Galba to revolt. When the Senate officially declared him an enemy of the state, they sent a messenger to Nero in the hopes something might be worked out. But, fearing the worst, Nero settled on suicide. But he could not do this himself, so he coerced a slave, Epaphroditus, to do it. In his final words, he is quoted as saying, Oh, what an artist dies in me. To placate an incoming Galba, the Senate then ordered the damnation of Nero's memory. Statues were smashed. Coinage defaced. The name Nero was never to be spoken again. Of course his name was spoken again. Why else does it appear in the history books? That's it for today. Thank you for joining us for Romans Behaving Badly.